Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, we're going to stylize some photo using Focus 2. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Mon nom est Serge Ramelli. I'm a French photographer living in the beautiful, the amazing, the extraordinary city of Paris. And I have the honor of making two tutorials per week. Click here if you want to get the raw file of this episode and all the past episodes. A lot of raw files. You subscribe to my newsletters and you will get access to this page where you can download any files and try all this free stuff that I'm giving you. And click here if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel. In last week's episode, I was again playing with MacFun Amazing Plugin Intensify Pro with this photo of Montmartre. This is the before photo, that's the final result. This week, we're going to continue exploring their plugins, this time Focus 2 Pro. I'm going to take this photo, this is a portrait that I did years ago, it's a composite portrait, and give it a, a, a blur effect with motion, which is the final result here. And then I'm going to take this photo, this is a pretty boring daylight photo, retouch it in Lightroom, and give it a little tilt shift effect in Focus 2 Pro, and that's the final result. So, let me show you how we do this. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs, and welcome to this new tutorial on MacFun Focus 2. Now, I'm also going to show you some other Lightroom tricks along with it. And um, so first and foremost, uh, if you want to be able to follow this uh, podcast, this tutorial, I advise you to go to my website, uh, to the homepage, you go to News, MacFun. And today I'm continuing my series on, uh, on MacFun products. And this time we're going to explore Focus 2 which you can just buy by itself, which is uh, uh, probably um, yeah, 54 uh, euro. Oh, no, that's tonality. It's uh, Focus 2 is uh, 29.99 euros. And you can get 10% if you put the code PHOTOSURGE. Now, I advise you to get a Creative Plus, which you get everything that they do. And you, you buy it only 114.99. But please use PHOTOSURGE still uh, as a discount. Okay, next, um, I'm gonna not do anything on this photo. This photo was uh, shot into a studio. It's a portrait of a friend named Jean-Yves, but I call him Wesley Snipes because I think he looks like Wesley Snipes. Uh, the background was shot in Florida. He was shot in the studio and I composed, it, I composed him in the photo. If you wanna know how to do this, uh, a little advertisement for my training, if you go to my training package, you get all my training package and there's one specific course called Photoshop for Photographer, which is bundled up with Lone Exposure course or Lightroom 5 training. But if you want to get just Photoshop for Photographer, which teaches you all I know about Photoshop, you go have to go to the next page and there you find it, Photoshop for Photographer. And uh, you can use the code PHOTO40 to get 40% on this course if you want, PHOTO40. All right, so now let's talk uh, about this Focus Pro uh, plugin. So Focus 2 actually. So I'm going to right click, edit, and go to Focus 2 Pro. Now I already like the photo, but I want to, to, to uh, explore new ways of retouching this. And I thought this plugin was a good opportunity. When you open up the plugin, you've got different presets there. Portraits, nature, architecture, macro, tilt shift, and custom. We're going to look at two today. So first, portraits. Now when you start out with the portraits, uh, you've got... You have this also in Photoshop CS6, but they, they really bring it to the next level and I'll show you why. So, you know, you have a little target there. It looks like we're going to kill the Wesley Snipes, but we're not. We're going to blur the background of him. So I can put this over here. I can use a little green things to make it the size that I want. And basically what happens is that inside of the circle, everything is sharp and outside from this point to this point, it gets more and more blurry on the gradient to look natural. Okay, and if you want to see without, you just put your mouse away from the window and you can see what it looks like. Uh, now, they have some really cool options that other softwares don't. I'm going to show it to you. First, uh, they have this. So, the, the blur filter is really, these sliders are really going to deal with what's outside. Okay, so if I boost up the blur amount, what is going to happen, it's going to be more blurry outside. Okay, if I want to make it more narrow onto him, I can do that. Uh, because it's going to start here and go on a gradient to full blur here, right? So I can even make this even shorter. Uh, if I, if you think it's too much, you can lower it, lower the uh, the amount. Okay. Now that's an option that they have, which is really cool. 
additionally to blurring what's outside of that target, you can put a you can make it darker with a vignette to put you know even more emphasis. You know, I just want to give this a portrait that was really this portrait was a lot of Photoshop work, and so to give it like a little blur can make it more organic. Okay, uh, so vignette you can make everything darker, uh, which is not in the target. Uh, contrast, you can add or take out contrast in this part of the vignette. Highlights, okay, you can play on the highlights, you can boost the highlights or lower the highlights outside, always in this area. Same thing with the saturation. You can add more saturation around him, less saturation. I might add a little bit more saturation around him, okay, or not. Or you can actually go the other way and make it darker. Okay, but now they got the, I really love this, this option, it's called motion. Check this out. If I add some amount, it's going to make a sort of like a, uh, a blur, but you know, with, um, you know, like a, a fast blur, directional blur, but it's, it, it's, it's, I, I, lo I love the feeling that it has, and you can even add twist to it to make it even more organic. I can twist it a little bit more and uh, I can lower the blur if it's too much. I can lower the amount of motion. You know, and I just I just like the idea what it gives. Oops, you can move it around like this, you know, by going on one of these lines. And uh, but that's not all. What they have also because they have an amazing sharpening clarity technology, and this sliders here will be uh, applied to what's in focus, meaning on him. So if I want to make him even more uh, pop, I could just add some clarity. And it's just going to add clarity on him and I can add some sharpening, just a little bit of sharpening. So he is really sharpened and this is real blur. So we are applying onto a, a whole different contrast here. Might be a little bit too much on sharpening, a bit too much. I'm going to back it down a bit, but check it out. Uh, before, pretty natural studio and after. Okay. And I think I'm going to add a bit of saturation. Actually, I'm going to put back the saturation. All right before after and you know it's it's just a really cool effect i think i'm going to add a bit more motion all right so let me once you're finished with it you just click here on apply and it's going to re-import the photo in lightroom with this effects so that's the before and that's the after okay i think it can really uh it just can make uh very interesting i'm sure i put this on 500px it's going to go very high up because it's just got a, a very nice organic look to it it's just it's a cool effect Okay, for 29 euros, it's kind of cool. Next, uh, I'm going to show you how to make a tilt shift photography and, uh, and how to retouch a sort of a boring daylight photo. Now, this is a boring daylight photo. It was shot from the roof of Notre Dame, a place that I love. It's one of the best views of Paris. It's called the Seven Bridge View because it's the only view in Paris where you got seven bridges. You can actually see seven bridges. So it's like the Seine is like a little snake going to La Défense. On the left, you've got the Eiffel Tower. I mean, it's just one of the best view, except that this day, the light was boring. So I'm going to show you a few tricks in, in Lightroom and in Focus 2 to make this photo a bit more interesting. So first and foremost, let's do my usual workflow, which is to open up the shadows and bring down the highlights. Then I'm going to do my white and black points. I'm going to hold on the Alt key, do my black point. I'm going to go the very far on this one. All right. And the white point, something like this. Okay. Now, uh, I want to add some more blue to this. I think the, uh, the, sin, the sky is not blue enough. So a little trick is I go to saturation and luminance. I take luminance. I take this little slider. I click on the blue and I lower the luminance of the blue. Then I go on saturation. I still have this little tool. I click it, but this time I go up and I add a bit of saturation in the blue just to bring, you know, a more interesting sky. Make sure you don't overdo it. It's going to be like, I usually on this sliders, I don't go over 30 as a value. Otherwise it can make like sort of artifacts. Okay. Uh, next I may add a little bit of vibrance and a little bit of clarity, something like this. And the uh, horizon is not straight. So I'm going to take this angle here, follow the horizontal, the horizon and click OK. So now it's already a bit less boring. If I press the backslash key, uh, that's the before, that's the after. It's already a bit less boring. All right. Now, uh, to make it even less boring, because this is, you know, this is a war against boring. I'm going to make the exposure a bit darker. I'm going to go to um, I'm going to add a post-crop vignetting. 
because I think it's going to be cool on photo. But this is the, the magic uh, formula. This is the secret ingredient. I add a bit of sugar. No, I don't. But what I do is I go to the split toning and I, I want to give it a bit of a Hollywood look. Remember in Hollywood, they put a blue green in the darks and a warm in the lights, you know, so you have this in almost every movie. So I'm just going to give it a little Hollywood look. So first I go in the saturation and add some blue crazy. Then that's the shadows. Then I go in the highlights and I add some orange. Okay. Something orange, red skin color, basically. Then what I do is I take my saturation of my shadows and I put it way down. And then I take the saturation of the orange and I take it way down. I just want to give it a hint, you know, like just Hollywood came by and give it a bit of a magic formula and left. Check this out before the splint toning, after the splint toning, just give it a little, a little interesting look. Okay. Now I'm going to give it a tilt shift look using focus Two. So right click, edit focus Two pro and uh, edit a copy with Lightroom adjustment. Yes, sir. That's what we want. And now it's going to launch that amazing plugin, which is really cool because I used to use Photoshop CC new options, but I think this one is more complete and gives a more interesting feeling. I'm going to jump to tilt shift and uh, right away by default, I've got a nice tilt shift going on. The tilt shift, what it's going to do is going to, it's going to give the illusion that this was shot, that this is not a real city, but like a toy city, that all the cars are toys because it's just an illusion in our mind because we are used to macro shots. Macro shots always have a very small depth of field. So when you see a small depth of field on a big wide landscape, you have this idea that it's, uh, it's actually uh, not a real photo. It's just a cool effect. So same thing here, the blur, which is here. Now this is my last setting. So let me reset everything because I was playing around. Let me show you how I got there. I'm going to reset everything. Okay, it's not resetting, so that's fine. I'm just gonna, I just wanna add some blur, but not so much. I like this idea that these cars are in focus. I can change around where my tilt shift is, because usually tilt shifts can be like this. Uh, that could be cool also to make it like this. Okay, and maybe boost a little bit the blur. All right, I think I'm gonna, you can make it even more tight. You know, make it like you want, something like this. Yeah, I just don't like the idea of having the Eiffel Tower completely blurry. So I'm going to move this up a little bit and move this down. Yeah, move this down a little bit like this. All right, something like that. Okay, and so this is again, uh, this plays around with the highlights. Uh, but on the outside, these sliders have to do with from that line to here and from that line to there, which is being applied on a gradient. Okay, I can vignette it, I can make it a bit darker, which which can be cool. I can add contrast or not on the outside. Why not? I can make the highlights go brighter, or maybe it's interesting. And I can add saturation or not in the outside, which I might add a little bit, okay? I can click at any time on compare to see where I came from. So I'm just adding this little, I'm not only adding a tilt shift effect, but I'm I'm getting the retouching to the next level, more saturated, because you know I'm a saturated addict. All right, so now I can add a bit of motion to it. Why not just a little bit of motion in the blur? And that's something you don't have everywhere. Okay, and it's just tilt shift effects are cool. And now the in focus part. So the in focus part is this one. Okay, I can make the in focus part brighter or, strong, or darker. I think I might make it a little bit brighter. I can make it sharp, sharper or less sharp. Now this one is already pretty sharp, so I don't think I'm gonna sharpen it even more. Add clarity or not add clarity? I think I'm gonna add a bit of clarity. I like the idea of having clarity here in the middle and that outside is very blurry. It just makes a, a contrast of, uh, you know, of texture between blurry and sharp, okay? And vividness, which is also saturation. Um, now this is, more on overall. Yeah, just a little bit like this. Okay. Compare. This is where we came from and this is where we are. So it's just a little more cool effect. It only works. Uh, this tilt shift effect only works if you really have like high vintage points where you have small people in small cars. 
Uh, it doesn't work on every photo, but uh, it's just, you know, it's kind of a cool effect. I think I'm gonna make it a bit more like this so it's more subtle and just maybe add a bit of blur, a bit more blur. Now, I think I need to lower this a little bit more. Okay, so let me show you again the before. Well, actually, let me just apply this and uh, show you the before and after. Uh, so it, it's just, it was like a cool photo of Paris, but it was kind of boring. So I'm gonna reset the original photo. This is what the original photo for me it was not even usable. And this is where we came from, a nice tilt shift, you know, with nice colors, okay? And this is my regular studio shot, a composite, and this is the, with the effect. So a really cool uh, plugin, which you can try, Focus 2 Pro. All right, Nance Monsieur, I hope you like this and you will check out their plugins. If you have any suggestions of tutorial you want me to do, just leave a comment under the video here. Thank you for being there and I'll see you in another episode. Mesdames et messieurs, au revoir.